Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Dell S3422 DWG. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys, but let's jump into the review. All right, now obviously, this is a 34 inch 21 by 9 ultra wide monitor with a resolution of 3440 by 1440p, aka ultra wide 1440p. Now, the PPI is pretty good. That's pixels per inch. This is how clear or crisp something is going to be on screen like text or in game so this is about 109 now this is pretty much exactly the same as a 1440p 27 inch monitor so this is essentially a 27 inch monitor and then widened a little bit so it's going to be the same height it's going to have the same ppi or clarity as a 1440p 27 inch monitor all right now the panel type is a va panel which is how they give this awesome monitor at a pretty affordable price tag now va panels typically have worse viewing angles than ips panels and they absolutely do because ips panels you can really look at them any direction you want whereas va panels it's best to be in the middle of the actual monitor this is not quite like a tn panel how it's terrible it's not insanely noticeable like on a tn panel but this one in specific has actually much better viewing angles than a lot of va panels so you can actually go fairly far to the right and left uh, without it washing out too much so it won't give that weird like everything going green effect like on a tn panel this will just kind of wash out a little bit uh but it's not that noticeable especially on this panel so that's a good thing besides that this is also curved with an 1800 r curved which is pretty much standard for 34 inch ultra wides that are gaming ultra wide so an 1800 r curve is good all right now the refresh rate hits 144 hertz not 165 but that's not a deal breaker for anyone, I don't think. Uh, just interesting that everyone's moving to 144 hertz or 165 hertz, and this one's still at 144 hertz. However, this does have, for VRR, it does have FreeSync Premium Pro, so the top end of AMD FreeSync. Now, that being said, this is G-Sync compatible, so you can, well, not technically. Technically, it's not G-Sync compatible, but you can turn on G-Sync. That being said, if you do turn on G-Sync, make sure that whatever game you're playing is gonna stay above 60 FPS. Below that, I was seeing a lot of flickering and it gets worse flickering the lower the frame rate goes. So above 60 FPS, absolutely no problem. You can enable G-Sync and it's fantastic. Just make sure that you're going to be hitting above 60 FPS. I think for most of you guys, uh, you're definitely going to be hitting above 60 FPS, but just keep that in mind. Now, beyond that, when I was testing for screen tearing, absolutely none we do expect that at this price point with this monitor but yeah absolutely no screen tearing all right now the brightness is really good this hits a typical brightness of 400 nits but it will go all the way up to 520 nits but do keep in mind that is peak brightness you're not going to see 520 nits all over the screen all the time but 400 nits is quite good especially for this price point we do see the competition going with those numbers but Throughout this review, you'll see why this one is really good and I think better than a lot of the competition from Gigabyte and Asus. But yeah, not only does this brightness make the panel look absolutely beautiful and vibrant, but if you're in a bright room, not gonna be a problem. Even if you're in a really bright room, there's windows behind you, I think you're gonna be good with this. This also has a matte finish on it, so you're not really gonna get any reflections. Uh, that being said, obviously, if sunlight is coming through the window and directly hitting the monitor, you're gonna need 1500 nits for that. But anything besides that, basically anything besides literal sunlight hitting your monitor, uh, you're gonna be good with this, which is cool. All right, now colors are good, hitting 90% of the DCI-P3 color space. Now you're probably not gonna be doing any professional video editing or professional color grading on this, but you can absolutely edit some YouTube videos on it. Obviously from the factory, you're probably gonna wanna calibrate it if you wanna do more color accurate work. However, I think most of you guys will be just fine with how it comes from the factory. It looks pretty, and I think that's what most of you guys are probably going to want in-game. Now, this has natively an 8-bit panel. Nowhere did I find that it advertised that it had FRC or frame rate control. However, in NVIDIA control panel, I was able to output 10 bits of color, and it does incredibly well with gradients, which is really awesome. Now, for all you productivity people out there, yes, this has picture in picture and picture by picture. That's all in the actual menu system. You don't have to download something else to enable that. You go right into the menu system with the joystick and you can get to picture in picture or picture by picture. All right, now the contrast ratio is obviously really good because this is a VA panel at 3000 to one. So those blacks are gonna be real nice, deep and black. This also has fantastic, fantastic black uniformity. We're not seeing any clouding going on. And especially in night scenes, this thing looks absolutely amazing. So if you do some racing at night, some night missions, 
very nice. Also during testing for backlight bleed, this had absolutely none. So I think the quality control is up there with Dell. I think a lot of monitors. I've reviewed quite a bit of Dell monitors at this point and none of them have had any quality control issues. So that is pretty cool. All right, no, this is where it gets really interesting. And this is gonna be something that's gonna heavily affect your gaming performance. This is response time and ghosting. Let's go over it. So first of all, this has a two millisecond gray to gray response time that is in the fastest response time setting. That is actually really good for this class of monitor. However, the interesting part is let's get into the response time setting. So first of all, there's three different settings. There is fast, super fast, and then extreme. All right, no, in the slowest setting, fast, there is quite a bit of ghosting. It's like a really big amount of ghosting. Uh, not quite like some other monitors that I reviewed, but it's definitely pretty bad. Then you go into fast or super fast, then it brings down the ghosting a ton. Like just from going from fast to super fast brings it down a ton. And we see a tiny bit of inverse ghosting, but really not that much at all. Now you put it into extreme, it brings down the ghosting by a little bit even more. However, it causes some really weird stuff going on. So we've seen on some of these other panels, like the Asus had a little bit of red and green ghosting. It wasn't a deal breaker at all. And it actually seemed like some monitors had it, some monitors didn't. However, this one in the extreme setting has terrible red and green ghosting in that extreme setting. So when you get this, set it in super fast. Now, when I did the unboxing and the initial impressions and the initial ghosting impressions and test where I kind of go through the UFO test and I kind of test out all the different response time settings right with you guys, uh, the extreme setting looked way better than all of the others. However, once actually using it, the super fast setting is the best one by far. You go into the extreme setting and during a UFO test, it looks fine. It looks like very low ghosting. However, that red and green ghosting doesn't react the same way as typical ghosting. And it looks absolutely terrible and extremely noticeable in game during dark scenes, going from dark to light scenes. Really, really bad. So you set it in super fast and it changes the monitor completely, completely takes that away. And during testing with it in super fast, you saw absolutely no ghosting, basically completely unnoticeable. So basically fast is terrible, super fast is great, and extreme is terrible. So if you get this, set it in super fast and you're gonna be green to green. So full pass with that ghosting, that was close. I was kind of worried when I was reviewing this, but yeah, really good. All right, the menu system and controls, you probably heard this before if you've seen my other reviews of Dell or Alienware's controls. So number one, I absolutely love that they have a dedicated power button. A lot of these monitors, you have to hold down the joystick for a while. That gets annoying because I turn this thing on and off multiple times per day. Now, then continuing on with controls, on the back right side, there is four buttons. Those are all just for customizing. So you can customize what settings those might change in the menu system. Those are just there as customizable buttons. I never use those. For some of you, they might be helpful, but I don't really ever use them. Then there is a joystick back there, which it uses to control basically all of the menu system. And that's perfect. It works great. Although I don't like that it's over on the right side, even more so with this. When it's on a 27 inch, it's not as bad. But with this one, you gotta kind of reach back there. I do wish it was on the bottom like LG and now Scepter is doing. So I hope the Dell moves that to the bottom of you way easier. And also if you have these side by side, if you get two of them, it's definitely gonna be harder to get around to that menu system if you have a dual monitor setup. So I really don't like that setup. However, how many of you guys are really gonna be messing around in your menu system all the time? I think a lot of you will set it and forget it, which is why I I really do like that they have a dedicated power button. So for most of you guys, I think that won't be an issue at all. So yeah. All right, VESA compatibility is good with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter VESA compatibility. So yeah, you can mount this thing however you'd like. All right, now the ports. This thing is awesome with ports. It has two HDMI 2.0s. They can go up to 120 hertz. This has one Display Port 1.2. That has the full 144 hertz at 1440p. It then has one USB Type B upstream and four USB type A downstream. Two of those are back where all the ports are. And then two of those are underneath the monitor on that chin over on the left side. That's awesome. You can plug in whatever you want in there, your keyboard, your mouse, any other peripheral. That is so cool. Especially if you want to mount RGBs on the back of it and then plug in peripherals on the front. Wow. I mean, they just thought this one through and I really like they give you that. Obviously as well, you do have a three and a half millimeter audio out. All right, stand and build quality is typical Dell. They have nice metal pieces for the base with thin plastic covering it. It all looks pretty average and typical Dell, but it is good quality. 
uh, and it feels like it'll stand the test of time. It feels strong and sturdy. Now this stand has height adjustability and has tilt and it has a little bit of rotation. I think it's just there to get this like straightened or centered leveled on like a desk that may not be leveled. I know the LG GP83, the ultra wide, I think that's the name of it, but that one also has the same thing. So I think it's a common thing for ultra wise to have just to kind of level them a bit more. But overall, should you buy this monitor? Well, I think absolutely. I think it's an absolutely awesome monitor. Set it in super fast, low ghosting, no red and green ghosting, a ton of ports, great brightness. And for my over experience, really good quality control. Again, if you want to check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada and international links. I do got you guys. But between the Asus, the Gigabyte and this one, they're all in a similar price range. They're all ultra wide VA panels with 1440p resolutions. I think I would pick this one because of just being a little bit more polished than the Asus and that Gigabyte. Although I love both the Asus and the Gigabyte, I think they're absolutely fantastic. These are only minuscule changes between all of them, but that ghosting is absolutely huge for me. And Dell, for some reason, I don't know why, but Dell has been doing such a good job with ghosting, uh, pretty much better than anyone in the industry right now with these VA panels, with these much more affordable VA panels. So really great job, Dell, with that. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews. If you guys enjoyed this video, end it up to you. Help me out and throw a like below. And if you want to see comparison with this one and a more expensive LG IPS Ultrawide, I will be coming out with that soon. And I think I'm going to be comparing this, doing a triple comparison with the Asus, the Gigabyte, and this one. So definitely make sure to subscribe below if you do want to see that. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.